So there are a couple of interesting ALL presentations at ASCO. Uh, two of them actually from MD Anderson, and they're trials I'm pretty familiar with because they actually started when I was there. So one of them is the use of hypercevat and panatinib in patients with Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL. We now know that the standard of care for most of those patients is a TKI, and typically a second generation TKI, usually dasatinib in combination with some type of chemotherapy, except maybe in really older, frail patients, you might give the TKI alone. Um, so what this trial uh, did is it started out using the standard dose of panatinib of 45 milligrams a day, <clears throat> but later in the trial, the trial was amended because it was recognized the uh, vascular events that were being seen with panatinib, and in fact, there were some on this trial I'll mention. So the trial was amended so that they start out with 45 milligrams just for two weeks during induction, and then they go down to 30 milligrams after that. And then if patients actually achieve a complete molecular response, the dose goes down to 15 milligrams. Part of the reason for the amendment is that there were two deaths early on attributed to MIs. Um, again, attesting to the known uh, arterial uh, events that can occur with panatinib. There have been no uh, deaths since the amendment of the trial. What's very important is that a complete molecular response, which is the most important determinant of long-term outcome in pH-positive ALL, uh, occurs in 75 to 80% of patients, so the vast majority. And in fact, the survival uh, rate now is at the same level. So this looks like, and it's phase two data, it's not randomized trial data, but it looks like this is uh, probably the best regimen described yet for pH positive ALL and I think very significantly related to the use of panatinib. Obviously the chemotherapy contributes, but clearly if we look at MD Anderson historical data with the same chemo regimen, hypercevat and imatinib or hypercevat and dasatinib, this data is significantly better. Really attesting to the fact that this is probably the most potent TKI, uh, but that was hampered in its development as we know because of, of the cardiovascular events. And that hopefully now is being abrogated by lower dosing and that's the direction that that drug's going in and CML also is to use lower doses. But that, the outcomes in pH positive ALL are highly impressive and no difference based on transplant. So really suggesting some of these patients may have cure or long-term survival without the need for an allogeneic stem cell transplant.